iPads and other devices are called tablets because they belong on tables. They are tested 20 centimeters away from that big guy that I showed you before. 20 centimeters away. They are not approved to be held in the laps of little children, although millions of kids are having them now in schools because the people involved in educational technology and those involved in public health research are not talking to one another. Because if they were, they would understand that you're giving children a two-way microwave radiating device, and if you must give them such a device for learning purposes, put it on airplane mode, so that it's not sending and receiving signals as it does otherwise. Now this is some new modeling, again, that we've developed with colleagues in Brazil, and we can share with you how we've done it. It's, we first start out with the MRI and create the model with one millimeter voxels, and this is quite a bit of work goes into creating this, and here is what it looks like after a period of six minutes. And that's really not as bad as it might look because you see the red area only gets partway through the eye of the adult, right? The one that we're really concerned about is this one with the young child. And this is a three-year-old brain that we modeled. And you see that by the end of that six-minute call, uh, the peak radiation, yellow and red, is, is, is getting all the way into almost both eyes. And again, this is one call, and it's not going to kill anybody. It may not cause any biological effect whatsoever for one call or two calls or three calls. But the question is, what's the cumulative impact of this kind of exposure? How do we evaluate it? And I want to show you an example of some of the work that we are doing now that I'm releasing here for the first time. And this is a modeled microwave radiation dose of a six-year-old with greater levels to the frontal and temporal lobes, eyes and cheek. And watch this here. Now, yellow, white, and red are the hottest, all right? And if you look carefully, you will see it's going into the eye, the nose. Do it again, just so you'll get to see it. And partly into the brain stem. Now, that's just showing you that there's going to be some exposure into that area of a young head. It doesn't tell you that there's any biological effect, right? Now, the next slide is going to show you something that might be of interest to students and faculty here, and that has to do with exposure to the reproductive organs. We call them the gonads, I think you say the testicles, and bone marrow. And look here at the radiation as it gets into the groin area. And that's just from having a mobile phone modeled into the pocket. And this, again, is based on a normalized SAR with a, I think we had a uh, dipole antenna. Now, the breast. The breast is mostly fat, contains a lot of fluid. Things that contain flattened fluid cook faster in the microwave oven. Now, a cell phone can't cook anything, all right? Mobile phones do not pop popcorn. That was a fraud. They don't make any heat that we know of, otherwise they wouldn't be permitted. But they do go through things that contain fat and fluid. And we are now working at Environmental Health Trust with scientists at the University of California, San Francisco, uh, scientists uh, at formerly the president of the American Cancer Society of California, because we are seeing women who keep cell phones in their bras. Has anyone seen a woman put a cell phone in her bra? Hands up, please. Please tell them you've heard now why they shouldn't do that. And here I want to show you our first case report from 2009, and we now have many more. This was a Chinese-American woman, a Chinese-American woman, who used her cell phone four hours a day in her bra for 10 years while she was driving. Now, and you drive with a, with a phone on your body, the phone is smart. It's going to go from one tower to another, and it's going to say, here I am, where are you, here I am. And it's going to be going to max power each time it moves from one cell tower to another. And there it was right next to her chest. And the tumors that developed, developed right under the antenna of the phone. 
unusual tumors. But in the meantime, people have a right to know how you can minimize exposure. And again, I think this information is available on our website, will be available on yours. Remember, if you have to give a phone to a child, put it on airplane mode. And think about this. That microwave oven, it works because there's a metal box around the microwave signal. And the signal pings all over the place. Next time you get into an elevator or a train for any length of time, put your phone on airplane mode. Otherwise, that signal is going all over the place, magnifying and coming back. Keep the mobile phone away from you when it's on and you are asleep. Now, it takes a village to do a lot of things. These are some of the people whose materials I've used today with their permission. And I can't read this list to you, but I want you to know that I feel really honored to be working with some of the most talented people in the world on this issue. And they have given me permission to share these materials with you. And I leave you with this thought from Albert Einstein. The world is not dangerous because of those who do harm, but because of those who look at it without doing anything. So, thank you.